Boy, Tales of Childhood by Roald Dahl. A visit to the doctor. I have only one unpleasant memory of the summer holidays in Norway. We were in the grandparents' house in Oslo, and my mother said to me, We are going to the doctor this afternoon. He wants to look at your nose and mouth. I think I was eight at the time. Uh, what's wrong with my nose and mouth? I asked. Nothing much, my mother said, but I think you've had, got adenoids. Well, what are they? I asked her. Don't worry about it, she said. It's nothing. I held my mother's hand as we walked to the doctor's house. It took us about half an hour. There was a kind of dentist chair in the surgery, and I was lifted into it. The doctor had a round mirror strapped to his forehead, and he peered up my nose and into my mouth. He then took my mother aside, and they held a whispered conversation. I saw my mother looking rather grim, but she nodded. The doctor now put some water to boil in an aluminum mug over a glass flame, and into the boiling water he placed a long, thin, shiny steel instrument. I sat there, watching the steam coming off the boiling water. I was not in the least apprehensive. I was too young to realize that something out of the ordinary was going to happen. Then a nurse dressed in white came in. She was carrying a red rubber apron and a curved white enamel bowl. She put the apron over the front of my body and tied it around my neck. It was far too big. Then she held the enamel bowl under my chin. The curve of the bowl fit perfectly against the curve of my chest. The doctor was bending over me. In his hand, he held that long, shiny steel instrument. He held it right in front of my face, and to this day, I can still describe it perfectly. It was about the thickness and length of a pencil, and like most pencils, it had a lot of sides to it. Toward the end, the metal became much thinner, and at the very end of the thin bit of metal, there was a tiny blade set at an angle. The blade wasn't more than a centimeter long, very small, very sharp, and very shiny. Open your mouth, the doctor said, speaking Norwegian. I refused. I thought I was going to do something to my teeth, and everything anyone had ever done to my teeth had been painful. It won't take two seconds, said the doctor. He spoke gently, and I was seduced by his voice. And like an ass, I opened my mouth. The tiny blade flashed in the bright light and disappeared into my mouth. It went up high into the roof of my mouth, and the hand that held the blade gave it four or five very quick little twists, and the next moment, out of my mouth and into the basin, tumbling came a whole mass of flesh and blood. I was too shocked and outraged to do anything but yelp. I was horrified by the huge red lumps that had fallen out of my mouth into the white basin, and my first thought was that the doctor had cut out the hole of the middle of my head. Those were your adenoids, I heard the doctor saying. I sat there gasping. The roof of my mouth seemed to be on fire. I grabbed my mother's hand and held onto it tight. I couldn't believe that anyone would do this to me. Stay where you are, the doctor said. You'll be all right in a minute. Blood was still coming out of my mouth and dripping into the basin the nurse was holding. Spit it all out, she said. There's a good boy. You'll be able to breathe much better through your nose after this, the doctor said. The nurse wiped my lips and washed my face with a wet flannel. Then they lifted me out of the chair and stood me on my feet. I felt a bit groggy. We'll get you home, said Mother, taking my hand. Down the stairs we went out onto the street. We started walking. I said, walking. No trolley car or taxi. We walked the full half-hour journey back to my grandparents' house. And when we arrived at last, I can remember as clearly as anything my grandmother was saying, let him sit down in that chair and rest a while. After all, he's had an operation. Someone placed a chair for me beside my grandmother's armchair, and I sat down. My grandmother reached over and covered me, covered one of my hands in both of hers. That won't be the last time you'll go to a doctor in your life, she said. And with a bit of luck, they won't do you too much harm. That was in 1924, and taking out a child's anoids and often the tonsils as well, without any antiseptic, was common practice in those days. I wonder, though, what you would think if some doctor did that to you today.